Hey everyone, I think we're uh, we're going live. I'm I'm going live just kind of on a whim, um, and and I I think this is um, uh, I think everybody's hearing me. If you could just give me a quick chat and give me a uh, yes, we're hearing you. Yes, we're seeing you. I've been told that with all of the coronavirus and streaming that's been going on, uh, HD streams are being cut and they're cutting out and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know if this is gonna work. I just figured it's Friday. Uh, afternoon. Um, I'm getting, it's funny, I'm getting warnings from uh, YouTube on my little uh, dashboard over here saying, uh, uh, you know, your, uh, your bandwidth is above our recommended uh, use for this. So, so anyway, if, if this live stream just explodes, my apologies, it was, it was an on the whim roll of the dice anyway. Um, I have just been seeing so much demand and so much uh, uh, curiosity around the Cisco Encore series that we're creating at CBT Nuggets. I thought I would go live and just do a, a brief lesson from it on NetFlow. I literally, uh, as of about half an hour ago, just finished creating this section of the material for the CBT Nuggets, uh, the CBT Nuggets course. So um, uh, it's fresh in my mind, and I thought I would show you kind of how we're approaching the content for Cisco Encore, which I, I know it's it's been the number one question I've gotten everywhere. When's it going to be done? For that, I would refer you over to CBT Nuggets because since ever since uh, the the new style is there's not a, a single trainer that really owns the course. It's a whole bunch of trainers that come together and create the content. So so trying to figure out the timeline on that is is a work in progress. So uh, CBT Nuggets has the. Uh, 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 timeline on that i see i see someone saying i wonder if lord beardman was beardman is watching um that would be that would be most likely uh chuck and uh chuck last i saw of him on instagram he sliced his hand with something and his daughter was throwing garden shears at him or something i don't know what that was all about so so that being said um let me show you uh netflow how we're doing it at cbt nuggets um, and, and I think you're going to get a good feel for this. So, so as many of you know, or maybe don't know, um, our material now includes labs and you're seeing the interface of the, uh, of the labs right here on the screen. I'm just, I'm, again, sorry, sorry for the, um, uh, slow hesita hesitating, uh, view. Uh, I keep getting warnings from YouTube about my bandwidth. Again, we're in this, we're in this strange, uh, surreal sort of, um, world. So I'm, I'm just waiting for it to, to make sure that the, uh, the, um, stream is continuing. Okay, good. So, so that said, um, let me dive into this. I'm just going to talk. I'm not even going to look at all the flashings from YouTube. And if this doesn't go through, then, then now I know, but I do see your chats. I see somebody typing CCNA. So go for it. All right. So, so that said, um, NetFlow is one of the topics in the new CCNP Encore. Uh, this this little gem is how you become an amazing network. Uh, in the in the video I just created, I said you become a network stud or studette. Uh, but somebody said, oh, you should call it rock star. So I'll say rock star. It it just feels a little cliche. Um, the the uh, NetFlow gives you the ability to go one step beyond network monitoring. So in normal network monitoring, you get to see a graph, right? SNMP, you're seeing, okay, my internet bandwidth is at 50 megabits per second. Oh, it's 100 megabits per second. Oh man, we're capped out at 120. Like, ah, all our bandwidth is being used. NetFlow takes it the next step and allows you to say, what is using my bandwidth? And it's a little known feature that, that, uh, that um, uh, is really easy to turn on on Cisco routers and not many people know. So I want to show you not only how to turn it on, but also how to, uh, how to look at the data that's coming through. Um, question from Corey, have you taken the new CCNP yet? Um, no, I haven't, uh, because they shut down the testing. This sort of, I was planning to take it at the end of March, but they shut down all the certification testing. So I haven't been able to take the new Encore yet, uh, but I plan to. And if I've heard, it's exactly like the CCNA, 102, uh, multiple choice, quick answer questions. So, um, like it or hate it, that's, that's the new format. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. So. That being said, let me, um, I'm going to focus in and show you how to configure NetFlow, and then I'll take a bunch of the questions that are coming in on the chat. So um, first and foremost, I'm on a router. This is, by the way, an emulated router called Flow. I have a client PC that's connected to this. 
this guy right here, as well as a Windows-based server that's running IIS, it's running FTP. Uh, so we can actually generate uh, some traffic going through it. So first off, I'm going to test and make sure that everything is still running the way I think it is. So, so this client, if I were to, if I were to give you a uh, flyby network diagram, this is a client right here. It is 10.1.0. something uh, connected to a switch that goes to a router and then comes up here to a server 192.168.1.100. Uh, this guy is running IIS, it's running FTP services. Uh, so we should be able to actually get some traffic going through and um, uh, be able to, to monitor that, right? <laughs> I gotta stop looking at your questions. Uh, thank you, Corey. Um, so so uh, let, me, um, let me do that. I'm gonna first off make sure that I can ping that IP address, 192.168. 1.100, yes, it's good. So check this out. I'm gonna open a web browser. And this, again, this, this, is, this is what the new CBT Nuggets course looks like. You actually have a full access to a lab. Um, it's, it's, you know, we'll call it real-ish equipment to where you can practice all the commands and everything like that. We've got IIS up and running. I can even go back to my router now because this flow is the name of my router that it's going through. And I'm gonna do a uh, show IPNAT translations. Just to verify, yes, you can see there's my ICMP that's going through. This is my client. So the IP address is 10.1.0.51. Here's all the TCP sessions when I was hitting refresh on that IIS webpage that it's generating going through. You can see it going to HTTP uh, port 80. Okay, so uh, now if we want to enable NetFlow, it's only two commands. Uh, the key is to understand what they do and what data it's going to gather. So check this out, go into global config mode. Um, I'll do a quick show IP interface brief, and you can see that right here we've got gig 0 slash 0, which is connected to the inside. That's the 10.101. Gig 1 slash 0 is going to 192.168.1. That's, that's the one, and again, I, I'll, uh, just to get that, let's, let's keep it up on the screen so we can see it. Here's our router. Here's our PC. It's the dot .51. This is the dot .1. It's going up here to a uh, web server, which is dot .100. That's shoom, that guy right there, right? That the, the the IP address that we're we're actually accessing. So we'll keep that up there just so we can reference it as we go. So I'm going to go into interface GI zero slash zero and type in IP flow, and I'll hit the the question mark. You can see the two commands that we can do: IP flow ingress and egress. Um, this is the direction, which it gets kind of confusing, and it's a big deal when it gets to NetFlow. Let me explain why. First off, be the router, right? When you're trying to figure out which, which um, uh, direction to, to set the NetFlow monitoring on, be the router. So I'm, I'm looking at my GI 0 slash 0 over here. It's connected. So, so here's my diagram. You can see it on the screen. Uh, it's behind my head. Hang on. There we go. It's connected. Uh, it's connected right here to the inside. So this is G0 slash 0. So ingress, when I'm thinking of ingress right here, that's coming into that interface. So that's traffic going that way, as well as egress, that's traffic going out of that interface, right? So that's, that's, the, uh, that's the flow of the network. And it, it's no problem. Here, let me, let me uh, jump back up here and, and uh, clear that off. Um, it's no problem to enable it in both directions, um, but it really matters which interface you, you set it up on. This, this router is running NAT. I just showed you the show IP NAT translations before. If we enable it on the outside interface, you're not going to see who's using your bandwidth. Like, oh no, bandwidth is used up. You're going to do a, a, you know, check the, the NetFlow stats. And it's like, oh, all I see is the outside interface because it happened after NAT occurred, right? You want NetFlow typically on the inside interface so you can see who is using the bandwidth. It, it, it's it's pre-translation before it gets translated via NAT, right? So, so I'm going to type in IP flow uh, and we'll do ingress and IP flow egress. That's it. That's all there is to enable NetFlow. Now, keep in mind that turns on the NetFlow collector. You're now gathering the statistics that are going through the router. You're not actually sending it to an outside box. That's the NetFlow exporter. Those, if, if, you're, <laughs> if you're taking notes, if you're studying for the Encore exam, um, you, you need to know those two pieces of NetFlow. Collector gathers the data, and you, can, you don't have to export it. You can just watch it on box, but you won't get it much historical at all because it'll eat up all the memory of your router. 
It's the exporter that lets you go to some monitoring system. Like yeah, everybody knows my favorite is PRTG, but SolarWinds, there's um, uh, Net Analyzer. There's, and there, there's actually a lot of monitoring systems, free ones, that will monitor just NetFlow. That's all they do. Um, so, so you can do that. So um, I'm going to come back here and let's, let's just generate some, some traffic. I'm going to hit the refresh key on this a couple times. Let's start an FTP session too. I'll do FTP to 192.168.1.100. And I'll log in as anonymous. I'll just give it an uh, email address it can use. There we go. So I'm going to do an LS. And I can see there's some files over there. So let's, let's do a, a quick get. Sorry if this is super small on the YouTube window. Uh, I'll say this one just so I can start a download. Paste it in uh, so I can get some some traffic being generated through that router. And again, this this I'm actually walking you through the lab that I built for the CPT Nuggets course. You get the same you get the same router, the same you, everything, same 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 when whenever it's done, whenever it's done. Don't ask me. Um, so I'm gonna come back here, and I will do a uh, let's do show IP flow. Uh, hello from Kosovo. Kosovo. Why, why am I thinking Beach Boys when I think of that? Aruba, Jamaica. Ooh, I want to take you. Aruba. The things that stick in your head. Bahama. Why is Kosovo? It's anyway. Um, so I'm going to do IP. <laughs> Hi, Kosovo. IP, show IP flow export. Um, oh, Ah, I totally forgot to do it. Kosovo, it threw me off. So, so hey, let's go back in here. I'm going to do IP flow. Check this out. There's a feature that you can turn on IP flow top talkers. Now you can see that I don't have any export turned on. You can see there, there's, there's no exports happening. I'm only collecting this. So we might as well, um, after I turn on the top t talkers, I'm going to say, show me the top, uh, let's do top five, top five talkers. There shouldn't be that many of them. Uh, it's my little lab network and we'll do, um, let's do top talkers. We'll do the sort by, and we'll do bytes, um, that, you know, top bytes transmitted. Um, then, we, okay, there we go. And, and while we're here, let's do IP flow and we'll do export. Let's, let's enable this as well. If you have a monitoring system and you want to export all of this net flow data out to them, uh, there is, um, uh, <laughs> sorry, I keep looking at the chat. It throws me off. Uh, the, uh, uh, yes. Thank you, Christian. I knew it was part of the beach boys song. So IP flow export. Oh, this, this will, what was I saying? This will take all of the net flow data and send, send it to an outside monitoring system. So I would say uh, destination and we would say, um, let's just do 10.1.0.100. Let's just say that's our monitoring system, right? Oh, one more thing on there. Port number. Okay. Key, key thing. Hang on. I'm going, I'm going big for this one. Big. Um, NetFlow sends all of its data to the monitoring system using UDP. And it's one of the few port numbers that was undefined. As in, if somebody asks you, what port number does NetFlow use? It's a trick question. There is none defined. You pick your port number, but it's really important. Matter of fact, let me, let me, let me come back here and I'm going to literally minimize here. I'll, I'll minimize this. So I've got a black drawing screen. Uh, hello, Dubai. Um, so <laughs> I had a, I had a co worker that was the top talker. Very, very annoying. Well, not anymore. They're gone, right? They're all working from home. Um, so what am I doing? I'm showing uh, NetFlow. So let's say you've got a monitoring system right here. Uh, this is your, let's just say this is PRTG, right? Um, which, uh, PRTG, which does have a NetFlow uh, sensor in there, right? And you create a NetFlow sensor. It's going to ask you when you do that, what, what port number do you want that sensor to run on? The most common one that people use if they're, it's their first time setting up NetFlow is 9999. Just because someone somewhere said, that's what I'm going to use. And that just became the legend of NetFlow. So, so here's, here's the thing. And this is the big thing that I want you to catch. If you're using NetFlow, let's just say you've got this router. It's Flow, the Flow router, right? You've got your internet connection going on here. And you want it to report the statistics of that internet connection to the PRTG monitor. When you set this up, and, and this, this is what I was, I was showing you. Now, I'll show it. I'll pull up the config in just a second. 
you set up the flow export to, let's, let's just say this is 10.1.0.100, right? You set it to that, and then you say port 9999, right? And that will start sending the data. Now, here, the, I, all of this to lead up to this one port. Let's say, one port, one point. Let's say we've got a second router, um, and let's say it's um, Mo, right? The Mo router, which connects to, maybe it's a backup internet connection. Maybe it's the WAN, maybe it's whatever. And we go in and we say, I also want to turn on NetFlow, and I want to have it go to that same server. Make sure you pick a different port number. Big mistake a lot of people will make huh, one time is they'll say, oh yeah, j that server is listening on 9999, right? Well, what that does is send all of the flows that are going through the Mo router and the Flow router to the same server and it can't differentiate what is coming from what. It will actually put them all together on the same graph and you'll get crazy messed up data, right? Because you're combining two different two different routers into one. So, so in the net world of NetFlow, one port, one device, right? So if if Flow uses 999, then make this one use 998. I mean, if you got 50 devices reporting NetFlow stuff, 50 port numbers, right? It's UDP port numbers that you just keep cycling through there. So so that's that's one of the big mistakes that people make when they first get into NetFlow is they um, they uh, uh, forget that port number is not defined and it's not all things run on 999, right? Hi, Australia. Uh, I'm going to hit uh, 999 nine hit the enter key and and uh and go from there now a quick question i i wanted to mention from christopher is uh is it possible to connect prtd prtg to gns3 yes it is um it, matter of fact that's what i had this 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 is an emulated environment that that i'm running right here um and it, it is connecting to an outside server you can throw a free trial of prtg on there i think they give you a hundred sensor version for life so go do that, um, and you can you can you can have all kinds of emulated stuff uh, connecting there. Hello, Kosovo. So I'm going to come back here and do a uh, show IP flow. So a couple things now. I'm going to do show IP flow export. Look at the difference now. So now I've got export set up, and it's saying, hey, I'm sending it to this this uh, server on port nine 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 nine. I've sent eleven flows in three UDP packets, or datagrams technically right now the funny thing is because this is udp that's all it will tell you it will never tell you if this is working i mean there's t there's actually no network monitoring server at 10.1.0.100 but my router doesn't know it's just like i'm shoveling coal you know i'm, I'm taking net flows and i'm throwing them over to there to that server and that's it right it, it, it the only thing it will tell you is if it drops something due to resources being unavailable like the fib if forwarding information base is, is not able to you know send it doesn't have a route there or something like that so so you know or adjacency issues you know I'm, I'm not able to reach that destination maybe initially or something like that so so you won't know if it's working until you go over to the monitoring server and see if it's sending data this is another thing that's unique about netflow comparing it to snmp SNMP is your monitoring server going, router, hello, give me the data. Router, hello, give me the data, right? NetFlow is your router being like, here, monitoring system, here's my data, here's my data, here's my data. What data? Well, it's all timed out by now, so let's generate some more. Um, uh, I bet you, yeah, I, I, I knew that'd be close. Open 192.168.1.100, that's my server. Uh, anonymous and j at j.com, just a random random uh, email let's do a quick list uh, let's get uh, let's download putty why not putty 64 bit paste it in just get some data going right um, now I'm going to come back here and do a show IP cache because this is all memory resident flow so notice flow export will show you the the netflow um, that you're that you're sending out there right uh, to the to the outside monitoring server if I type in IP cache, it'll say, well, show me what's in memory uh, from the flow route. So, I'll, I'll, or from flow route, that's a voice over IP uh, SIP provider, uh, NetFlow. So, so right here, uh, first interesting thing, this is, so knowing how to analyze this, like everybody's like, yay, NetFlow, until they do this and they're like, what the heck is it even saying, right? Um, so, hang on, let me, uh, let, me, uh, let me generate a little more traffic. I'm not getting anything yet. So, hang on, I'm gonna do a little more download. Let's do a couple of refreshes right here. Just get some data going 
through this. It's it's kind of hard to generate data when you've got you know a single emulated host. Let's let's uh, let's download the end map as well. There we go. Just just get some data flowing through this guy. See if we can get uh, get something to show up there. There we go. Yeah. All right. Now show IP cache flow. Right. Um, uh, stay. I'm going to answer that question just a second. Difference between IP flow ingress and egress. Give me just a second there. So so packet size distribution. This is kind of interesting. It's more more of like oh that's interesting sets. This is the packet size. So this is a, literally a 64 byte packet, 96 byte packet, 128 byte packet, and it, it says what percentage of data flowing through is actually each one. Now in my little lab network that I have here, look at this. 33% of the data is 64 bytes or, you know, or less, you know, but up down to, you know, 32 bytes right here. Nothing's happening there, but go across nothing, 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 nothing all the way up to here. Bam, right there. That's the MTU, 1500 or so bytes, right? 1536, 66.3%, you gotta move that decimal over, right? Is, is that data coming through? So again, with my one host, that's what I'm generating. If you had a lot more hosts, you would see that, that the statistics go across. Uh, or be spread out a little bit more. Um, so you get some some general, you know, here's my total flows and things like that. Down here is is where it gets interesting. Look, um, no, oh, this is kind of cool. Notice it's saying, hey, TCP FTP, I've got three total flows, ten packets. Why? Because not much happens on FTP port twenty one, right? That's the negotiation channel. That's FTP where it starts the session. Where the action really happens is FTP data port 20, right? TCP port 20. So, so that one I could say, okay, man, tons of packets that are flowing through there. So, so this, this NetFlow gives you first off an overview of what protocols are actually being used and check out the router go router stud recognizes them by name right and then it's like oh yeah i got some udp stuff going on down here as well these are you know dns requests things like that this is where the magic happens down here is where we can actually see the flows themselves that are passing through the router unfortunately it's not organized super well this is why exporting it to a monitoring system is helpful first off uh, notice it's saying hey we've got the source address coming right here to this destination because if you think about it it's coming from the server 192.168.1100 it's up there sending me the client 10.1.0.51 i'm getting the data um, and then because cisco is mean or like they're like you should know this and i don't they decide they decided to put the port number in hexadecimal what are you doing? So, so literally, if you're like, okay, well, what? I mean, what? What is that? You have to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bust out my. Uh, let's go to Google, and uh, you know, just hex two decimal, right? Let's grab this guy, rapid tables, and we'll say, you know, the hex number is zero zero fourteen, zero zero fourteen. Convert. Ah, decimal twenty, right? So, so what, so what is this right here? Well, it's the source port 14 and hex, but decimal 20, that's my FTP data, data stream. So I can say, Hey, that's how many packets is here now. Now it actually gathers more data than what you're seeing right here. Um, but it's not showing it to you in this export that would actually be sent to the, to the server where it's handy is you can actually do this. This, this is what you'll use on the router all the time. You'll do a uh, show, uh, what is it? Show flow, show flow, no, no, no. Show IP flow or flop, uh, top talkers. And it may have timed out. Nope, there we, we got it. Well, it, it's kind of, it's, it's it, so this table dies and comes back, dies and come back. This is what you'll probably use most of the time. So let, hang on, let me just go back here. Am I still there? Ah, come on. Let's uh, let's open our connection back up. Open. We are anonymous. J at J dot com. And let's download some stuff just so I got some some uh, top talker data that's coming through here. This is the stuff that when you're in production and you're like, show it to me now, log on to the router and do a show IP flow top talkers. And, th and there we go. See, now we can see some some good stuff coming through. It can say, hey, 
This is the server. It's sending about eight megabytes down to this client right here. But remember, my little lab environment with one, one host, it, I mean, it's, it's not generating much data. You're typically going to have thousands and tens of thousands of entries that it has to weed through. So it behooves the router for its own memory sake, because otherwise it runs the memory out, to clear this table off often, right? Export that data, clear it. Export that data, clear it. That's why usually if you're looking at NetFlow data that's, that's worthwhile, you'll want to uh, um, get an outside monitoring system for it. But that's it. So that's the core of NetFlow, and that's, that's a lot of what I just talked about on the CBT Nuggets Encore recording that I just did. I'm going to jump into some questions in just a second. But um, uh, Ronaldo, actually, I'll grab yours right now because I see it. Um, it is. It can be very resource consuming. That's why Cisco says if you have a memory shortage on your router, you don't have that much memory like an older router, don't turn on NetFlow because it will crash it. There's no page file on a, on a router, you know, for like, you know, oh, let's let's store things out of memory. It will literally freeze the router and, and cause it to reboot. So it can be very, um, very resource intensive. Um, one other thing that I wanted to uh, mention here is uh, the CCNP. So, so you're like, OK, cool. Got it. Uh, NetFlow, two commands. I can see the data. Um, CCNP actually goes in the Encore, goes into um, uh, flexible NetFlow. Oh, mama. That's, that's a whole nother, uh, whole nother realm. Let me show this. Uh, I'm going to do a flow record, right? And uh, I'll type in the name. So, so this is where you can actually go in and customize NetFlow to where you're like, I actually want to see exactly this data, and I want to send that data to that server. This data I want to send to that server. It's flexible, but with much power comes much confusion. Um, so I'm going to name this record. Let's let's name it. Um, let's name it Quality of Service QoS. Right. Let's let's say I want to use NetFlow to track QoS data. And so in here you have two two major options: match. And collect. I, I totally right now. I'm like I shouldn't have gone into this. There's so much to flexible net flow. Watch, watch this. I'm gonna type in match. And it's like okay, that's the start. Okay, so match IPv4. Um, whoa. Okay. Uh, type of service. Enter. Okay, great. So so what this does is this allows you to create a record that says I want to define my flows based on type of service and. Uh, Whoever NA, I'm, I'm, I'm working towards CCNA. Do I need to know NetFlow? No, you don't. This is CCNP. This is Encore. Um, so, so, um, so I might match data based on the type of service field. That, it's, it, it's, a, it's a bit, a byte actually, in the header of the IP packet used for quality of service. So instead of categorizing it by source and destination, like normal NetFlow does, we want to categorize it by quality of service marking, right? So, and then, then I want to say, and then I want to collect... Um, I want to collect, I mean, you could go crazy. You could say, I want to see what Mac addresses. This is not normal NetFlow. Mo NetFlow doesn't touch Mac addresses, but flexible NetFlow does. I want to collect what source Mac addresses are using the different TOS values, right? If you want to do that. Or I might say, I want to collect the uh, counters in bytes. I want to see, I want to see how much data is being sent for each type of service, right? So type of service one, oh, five megabytes over the last 20 seconds, you know, uh, type of service five, 20 megabytes, two gigabytes, whatever the case is, that's the kind of thing you can do with flexible NetFlow. So you first, so I'll give you the three step. I, I, like I said, I shouldn't have gone into this, but I did cause I'm crazy. Um, you first define the record, right? which is what I just did right here. That's where you say, here's what I want to match. This is the data I want to collect. These are how I define my flows. And here's what I want to collect from that data, right? That's, that's what the record is. You then define, and actually it, it, if, I, if I scroll back up, you'll see the exporter. Let me, let me scroll back up here, right here. These are the three pieces of flexible net flow. You, you then say, I want to, after I define the record, I want to define the exporter. And that tells me, where I want to send it because normal NetFlow, you have to send everything to one source or two, I think two sources or destinations is the maximum net, normal NetFlow can do. Flexible NetFlow, you have unlimited sources or I keep saying sources, destinations, that monitoring system, that monitoring system, that monitor, you can go all over the place, right? So the export record tells you that. And then the, the last record, I got to I'm trying to click back here is the monitor and that, Hang on, too many buttons. 
the monitor takes this and this and puts it together. You say, here's, here's what I want to collect. You know, I want to collect the type of service data, right? I want to send that to the monitoring system at 10.1.5.9, let's just say, just making up an IP address. And I'm going to put those two things together into uh, what we call a monitor. And that's all it literally does is, is take those two pieces, put them together, and then I can apply that to an interface. So I can say GI 0 slash 0, you're going to use the monitor 1. Let's just say I use a number to identify it. Um, inbound. And then it will capture type, type of service information, send it to that thing inbound on GI 0 slash 0. Whoo. <laughs> That's... So, so that was pretty much an hour of lecture from the uh, CBT Nuggets CCNP in about five minutes on flexible NetFlow. So that's 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 going one one beyond. So, so let's do this. I, I was only planning to go until four thirty. Let's let's just take five minutes because my my poor wife, she's in quarantine. We've got seven kids. They're like, ah, we're we're like, get out of the house. So we're we're there's a field right behind us with no people, right? So we're gonna go into the field and enjoy the outdoors. So, so let me, let me, um, let me just look, look at some of the questions that I've got coming in and sorry, I know, I know they've been, um, coming in the whole time. Uh, SNMP version three is nothing compared to NetFlow. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So SNMP version three, uh, is truly just SNMP. Uh, it's just with added authentication and encryption. NetFlow takes the data that SNMP kind of gets the high level view and breaks it down to, to individual flows. Um, Alexis, I'm not answering that question. Uh, oh, <laughs> my Alexa just went, I got to unplug her now. Uh, my Alexa on my uh, desk just was, started lighting up. Uh, thanks, Alexis. Um, so, uh, Gromans, go, go uh, Topics wise, CCNP 410 versus previ previous CCNP plus DNA center. Let me know if I'm wrong. Uh, no, no, actually you're right. Um, the new Encore is... It's a lot, think of it, I, I, somebody asked me, describe, and this was in a previous live stream somewhere. Someone said, what's the new Encore like? I said, it's like CCNA plus. That's, that's really how I would define Encore. Um, they took route, switch, and T-shoot and kind of took like some stuff out of them and put it all in Encore. So it's, it's like CCNA plus. It's like, okay, here's the next step after your CCNA. It really is. The next step. It's not. It's not too bad, but they do include, you know, DNA Center. They include a lot of the, um, you know, software-defined networking where we're going that that way. Um, uh, nope, Arbor, no news. <laughs> um, sorry, too many questions. I'm trying to look. Different between IP flow ingress and, and egress. Uh, Stay is asking a question. Uh, ingress. It's just the direction. What direction are you monitoring the data? Maybe you only care about the data coming into the interface then you're just going to monitor ingress. Egress is out of the interface, right? So that's, that's all there is to it. Not, not much from there. Hi, Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan, Pakistan. Uh, what is your minimum RAM? I don't know, honestly, because NetFlow, it, it uses RAM as you, like, it's, it's kind of like, well, if you've got a really big router, it's it's so let me let me say it this way there is no minimum ram recommendation other than if you're using an old router for something that it shouldn't be doing adding netflow to it will probably blow it up like if you're using a right size router for the kind of connection that you have turning on netflow shouldn't be even a thought like it's it's no problem like cisco gives you enough memory for that but if you're using you know like i there's a data center that i have a router in and it's literally a cisco 2801 um from like 2002 and it's still there i'm just it, with 100 megabit per se i'm like you know <laughs> good job cisco on making almost a 20 year old router that still works in the data center but um, i would not turn on netflow there um so a couple more questions uh i'll go a couple more minutes um Working towards the CCNA. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I'm hitting some of the uh, hitting some of the. Uh, and someone someone said I'm late. Sorry. Um, don't worry. I I I did not announce this. I didn't plan on doing this. I was just like, hey, let's go live and see if YouTube blows up because I know a lot of the people. Oh, good grief! Look at that. That's funny. <laughs> this whole time I've had this weird border around my head. Um, so I know YouTube has been blowing uh, up at uh, stream. So seems like we're going high from Israel. Hey, Israel. All right, let me let me uh, let me just look at the last uh, last couple questions. So, 
Jamie, which CCNP certification route do you prefer? T shoot, switch route, or Encore plus topic? Um, honestly, I'm not. I'm not going to say yet. Just and the only reason why is I haven't taken the Encore exam uh, because they shut down certification testing because of the uh, coronavirus. Um, because I've been in Cisco for so long, I would say I prefer the old route just because I know it and and it and it's good. I but. But I haven't gone into the new route yet. Um, I know the material in Encore. I'm like, okay, I like what they're doing. It's kind of like you got your CCNA. This is your next step. It feels a little more steppy uh, versus the old CCNP. Um, but but other than that, um, no recommendation uh, or no no opinion yet. Uh, can I start 410 and come back to the core? Yeah, yeah. Actually, Cisco has totally revised it to where you can do anything in any order that you want. You could jump straight into CC. IE, you could go to CCNP without having a CCNA. It's it's kind of like they're they're like do what you want, do what you feel experienced. You can take the exam in whatever order. Um, age doesn't matter. You're right. Age doesn't matter on the equipment. Although there is a mean time between failure on your routers uh, that you should adhere to that I am not adhering to. Um, I'm going to take CCNA at the end of May. Think the exams will be available by then. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> If I were a prophet on the coronavirus, I would say yes, but um, but who knows? The world has gone crazy. Um, and uh, last last two questions. Is it too soon with the current situation to know what recruiters are looking for with the new certs? Yeah. Uh, so, so it's funny. About three weeks ago, I was doing live streams on, on how to go after a job, like how to go get a job, how to do it, pass an interview. Um, I even had a, a friend of mine from Intel who's a manager talking about, here's what I, in all of that, I'm like, it's the best economy we've ever had. And I'm like, that was three weeks ago that I did this live stream. And now I'm like, you know, job, like 700,000 jobs lost last month in the United States. I'm like, good grief. Like I'd. I don't know what to say about, uh, uh, you know, is now a good time to get certified? Are people going to be looking for certs? I don't know what anybody's going to be looking for when this is all said. I mean, yes. I mean, if you're sitting around like I am right now, get certified if you can. Um, so so uh, last one from Corey. Um, will my CCENT continue to be renewed if I keep getting more certs? Yes. Yes, it will. Um, even though Cisco is no longer providing the CCENT, that certification will still be in your name as you pass more and more certs. Cool. Um, so that said, uh, appreciate you guys. I, I just, uh, like I said, just jumped in on a Friday afternoon teaching Cisco Encore stuff for CPT. And I thought, let's check in with everybody and see if YouTube survives yet another live stream. Uh, for now, I hope this has been informative for you. I'd like to thank you for viewing.